I, I, one of my, the funnest things about this is meeting these people, meeting people that, that you guys have such unique stories and everybody is in such a different place. And to hear like all these uh, different challenges at, at some totally different levels and places and, and, every, and, and each individual sees each thing as a different level of challenge, right? It's, it's not even the exact thing. It's what each person sees as a challenge. And we, we just love that we have uh, a model that is that helps everyone like every single person at whatever their challenge is, whatever level they're at whatever challenge they're at whatever it it's it's it gets to that core so and even one of the biggest <laughs> things of us learning all of this is seeing how much i mean how many things and ways of thinking that we have that we didn't realize before. You know, we thought we were pretty normal, we were pretty happy, lived great lives, and then learning all of this, we're like, wow, like there's so much deeper <laughs> things that we didn't see before, and now we're seeing it, and now it's on our conscious mind, and we're being able to analyze that and look back on that. Whereas before, we were just kind of like, kind of blind, I guess, to the way we were acting and living our lives and thinking that everything was great, when really there's so many things that we can still fix and that we could fix. And so seeing that is just like super eye-opening and really fun as well. So <laughs> yes. So I'm really trying to figure out if people are trying to message me some other way because there's quite a few people signed up that are not coming on. <laughs> but they were all invited the same way you guys were, I think. Let me make sure. Yeah. I wonder if anyone's trying to message me through Venmo. Eric is supposed to be on. I don't know. I'm not sure who Brock is. It sounds like they have an email that doesn't match their name, maybe. <laughs> or it's their spouse's email. Do you want to? Tell me who you are. So I Brock is Eric. Can I just see this change the uh, All right, Eric. <laughs> name on it. Yeah. Eric, do you want to introduce yourself just a little bit? Just sharing our kind of uh, backstory a little bit and then just our interest in attending today. All right. My name's Eric Clickie. Uh, Looks like our internet's not great with you. We heard a little and then it kind of digitized out. Is that what everybody else heard? Were you hearing the same thing? Yeah. So we lost you. I don't know if your voice slowly just kind of faded out. <laughs> That's OK. Well, hopefully we can kind of tell if people are trying to come on, but we don't want to put it off too long. Let's see, I was going to check one thing. Isn't there like a chat here or something? Not really. They just respond on the payment. Because I know you can friend people. It's really just on the when they paid. Okay. I probably won't see it. Well, we'll just get started, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to jump on when they can. Everybody has busy lives, so <laughs> so we'll uh, um, kind of get started a little bit. It's super exciting and fun to have these kind of people coming to our events because. Um, having already taken the action to be here, it kind of shows what kind of person that you guys are. Someone who really wants to improve, someone who wants to take action, someone who's searching and has hope. Hope is so, so, so important for us to be able to progress and to grow. Having that hope that whatever situation, whatever thing that we're going through, that there is something out there that we can, we can find and just, just keep searching until we get there and find it, right? We always say, you've tried everything except what works. 
right <laughs> so there really is things out there that you can do and so we're really excited to be able to share that with you and um, thank you for coming and being here I'm Mikhail Wilcox I'm Lamont's daughter yeah so. and I'm Lamont and uh, mm -hmm. I'm I'm kind of one that really uh, kind of created this model that we use and uh, the model is something that uh, over time the life experiences that I was challenged with um, brought me to a place where it was it, you know I just I, I was lost man I tried what I thought was everything for 20 years you know in marriage and and being a father trying to like use every avenue that was available that I could find and and you know did things with you know you know medical facilities and people who had medical expertise with medications and you know the physical side of things to help with mental struggles and mental illness and and then all the stuff you know outside of that that I could find all the naturopathic stuff and and all these things and and uh, it just seemed to be getting worse so and and worse in a in a way that's pretty rough you know just like not not really trying to <laughs> You know, again, using everything, Joe. <laughs> oh, I forgot to introduce Joe. So we do have one person live. There's a couple others I thought were going to be here, but I, the communication wasn't super clear. So, but uh, actually, I'm going to pause because I, I got to have Joe introduce himself. He's a he's a neighbor of mine. Can they hear me? Okay. Yeah, they can. I think okay. they can hear you. Maybe if I. Okay, so I I uh, live across, lived across the street from Mont and Mikkel, but we've moved into the neighborhood a little further. But we have three children that we've adopted, and we have uh, our youngest is 17, and she's pretty much shut down this year because of masks, with everybody wearing masks at school, with 2,500 kids at the school, and she's deaf and, and reads faces and lips, and she pretty much shut down this year. And her anxiety <laughs> is off the charts and has been for a couple of years, and it's worse this year. So we're we're we've everything you just said is is me. We've tried everything. We've, <laughs> where we've laughed, we've cried, we've hugged. <laughs> so <laughs> we're ready for an answer. Yeah. Yes. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Joe. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's quite interesting because we have kind of a different group here. Most of the people here have experienced some of what we provide and some a long time ago and things have evolved a lot. <laughs> for some of you that we haven't seen for a couple of years, it's, it, we've, yeah, we've had some real evolution. <laughs> I think uh, um, in my journey, one of the things that I really became affluent to and really, really addicted to is research and study because it, it, it freed me so much that it's become like an addiction of mine. I, I, I absolutely love, I can't go a day without at least a good hour of research and learning new stuff. She can attest to it. Yeah. I, like <laughs> nothing gets in the way of, <laughs> of getting at least an hour to two hours, sometimes five or six <laughs> in a day because one, I've kind of learned how to do the research in a really efficient way that, that takes, takes some time to learn. And, uh, but just to kind of give you a little bit more, as, as I was going along and really just in that place where I was like, this is, this is hell. I, I don't, like, at, at one point I'm like, what, what is, like, what is the, what, why? <laughs> like, this is just horrible, especially those that I loved having, you know, such a struggle with life to where they couldn't see a purpose at all. Like they, they didn't, they rarely could feel like it was worth being alive. And, and having that and being constantly, you know, uh, trying to figure out how to change that. And, uh, and one day, about five years ago now, I think, someone came along and they gave me some information that really like shifted my whole thinking. And they said, our brain is, it's just a, it's just a 
huge, massive, complex set of maps. And those maps determine our experience, not our experience. We think that our experience is this external world and what happens in that external world. But it absolutely is not. It's totally a maps in our brain. And the coolest thing about it is you can change the maps. You can change them to where any situation can seem like a completely different situation. You can have a reaction that you would have to a situation that you love when it's typically a situation you would hate. And that all relates to the foundational maps of thinking that we have created in our lives. And so that turned, that put up, that resonated with me. That really hit me hard. And so I started going after that. I started trying to learn and figure. And, and there was this gentleman that, that initially introduced me to it. And I, I took everything he had to give through that and, and figure out what, as much as he knew. And then I started to just research and study myself. And one of the amazing things is that I feel like it was just the perfect timing because I started finding ways to catch the most recent research. So I, would f I was finding out ways to get research as it came out. So, um, so I was getting like leading edge research and I would hear things in, in research that these researchers were gathering and they were opposing so much of what I had learned or heard or you know, th therapies that I tried or, or found out about or learned about or anything, they were very like different than what I had been hearing. And I thought, and I you know, once talked to one, one researcher who, he, and he was actually researching something different. He, he was researching um, uh, kind of our brain and how our brain works around chemicals and different things like that. And I got to go listen to him lecture and after the lecture I got to talk to him and he said, he said, we have, a, we have a really broken system when it comes to applying new information. He, he was a researcher at a school. He was in charge of a lab. He found some research that totally countered all of the diabetic, the diabetes treatments for type 2 diabetes treatments. He basically, he, he, he said, the way that doctors are doing this is just way off. Like it is, it is far out there. They're, they're missing this whole, uh, and, and I have science, I have stuff showing in my lab that shows that this is not working. And he goes, so, so I thought, how am I gonna like get this out? Like I, I'll, I'll write papers, research papers. He wrote a whole bunch of research papers and he put them out. And then he's like crickets. It's like, it didn't change anything. It's like, what do I do now? He's like, oh, I'll go around and I'll, and I'll speak at the colleges. Come on in guys. <laughs> Good to see you. Have a seat right over here if you can. We got more than half the people on Zoom. There's supposed to be another five or ten people on Zoom. <laughs> and uh, I'm watching for their messages to see why they haven't come on, but I'm so glad you guys came. Thank you. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. You can keep watching that. And, uh, and he said, I don't, I don't know how to get this information out. He, he's like, so I'll go around and I'll speak at colleges because he was a professor at a, at a prestigious college. So he started going around and... and putting this information out to colleges and and he goes guess who showed up to those a bunch of other professors <laughs> and a bunch of researchers and so it's like he goes this is too big I can't just sit here and just wait for it to work its way into mainstream you know I, I got to do something and so he's like it just the system and and I heard another researcher say it takes 30 to 40 years for new information and new data to find its way into the textbooks so it's like 30, like in today's time, that's like a billion years. That's like never. It won't even matter. It won't even, yeah, it's going to be irrelevant by the time. It, I mean, because they'll have so much more, you know. So we've, the acceleration of research around psychology and the brain is, is massive. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, what is it, eight, nine, ten years ago, I think they started what's called the Brain Initiative, the U.S. Uh, uh, government. And BRAIN is an acronym for these different things they're researching. But we've put over $950 million last I checked. So we're probably well over that now in, in research of the brain, meaning that all the colleges and all the places studying and researching, they got funding. 
And so suddenly they have tons of equipment. And, and it's taken a while for the, 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 the neuroscientists and the psychologists to look over at each other and say, hey, we're kind of doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> we're using different language for the same thing. We're trying to accomplish the same thing, but it's, it, we're not understanding each other because we're using different language. But, so there's been a lot of effort in trying to bring that together and, and to help the information the neuroscientists get, are getting, going, getting to the psychologists. Because up until now, up until just recently, all the psychology has been based off of talking to people, communicating with people. Like, so what happened? So how'd you feel? So what did you, you know, they do this study and then they ask and they ask questions. And, but that is so uh, tough. Inefficient. It's so inefficient and, and, and it's really full of bias, massive bias. And, and there's so many ways to skew that. The way you ask the question completely changes. I mean, uh, well, I don't wanna, <laughs> so much cool stuff around this. But anyway, <laughs> the, the, this research is just coming in in massive amounts. And, and that's what I started to find, and I started to learn that. And so um, I started to learn about this remapping our brain, and we're being able to create new ways of thinking, new ways of seeing and processing. And so I started to change my own life, and I started to do things differently. And, and, and that's where I've, I've run into a handful of you is, is that I started to, well, first I, I had to free myself up for more research. That was my first goal. So like, first thing is I, I gotta do, you know, I gotta find a way to spend more time on this because I've gotta figure it out. I have people right in front of me. I have myself that needs help in a, in a big way. So I, I started a little, I left the job, the, the tw 20 year career that I had, left that job and started um, another, uh, an, an, not doing this yet. I just needed a free time to do more research. And so I, I literally just like left my career, started up a, my, a, a my little business that w went big really fast, made a bunch of money so I didn't have to work for almost a year. And I spent that year researching. I literally lived day in and day out researching, like 10, 12, sometimes 16 hours a day. I just, like I had this bee in my bonnet. I had programmed myself to go after it, that it, it's, this programming thing is incredible. You can get yourself in play. And I loved it. I couldn't not do it. I was, I had what I wanted in front of me and I knew it was available. And um, one time I even looked up how much research was coming out from all this. And there was, as far as like solid uh, research papers coming out around uh, this, n the neuroscience and everything, it was, I think I figured about 500 pages a day. So that's how much research is coming in. And it's a challenge for, someone to like bring it together and, and find a way to use it to actually take an action and do something. And there are a handful of people doing something, you know, similar to what, uh, to what I do. Rarely have I seen people get it to the level that I feel like I've discovered and, and been able to help people in, in such a big way. And it's so interesting because even while um, we tell people and show people the model and, and explain these concepts and these ideas, People are like, oh, like I kind of already knew that part of it, or I was kind of already thinking that way, or I've heard of that. And so it's really just the, the fact that he brought it all together into a way that the brain can really see it, right? A lot of the times we hear things and we just, we don't, it doesn't quite sink in or we don't quite understand it. And so being able to present it and show someone else in that way that they then understand it, instead of just saying, this is how it is, and the person's like, I don't understand. So really <laughs> just bringing all that information to a model where it can be very clear, and then the person can then um, apply it because they then understand it on a deeper level. So just the understanding of the brain, essentially. Yeah, and ultimately what, what helped the researchers get to the core like this was the fact that now they can ask someone a question or they can give them an experience, and then they can actually watch their brain. They can watch it move, change, send electrons, you know, do everything it does, watch the chemicals. They literally can see this stuff. So now it's not like we, we do a test on someone and then we ask them about it. We just watch their brain. We have them have experiences and watch their brain. And so the research has really gotten to where, I think where we're really at more of a core of what's going on. Whereas in the past, the all, it, it's almost always about symptoms. It's what they can see on the outside. It's what they can, you know, ask and talk about and, you know, see things happen to people. And those are all symptoms. So all these, 
you know, mental illnesses that we call it. We, we use these, this language around it so that we can, you know, use uh, insurance and different things to help pay and medical things. And, and then we have medications and all those things. We, they're, they're really actually the symptoms of the issue, all of them. It, the, the core of the problem is much deeper. And the core of the problem, if you get to that, then you become this incredible, incredibly capable person to find the, at a cellular level, kind of the guidance system that's built into you. That's ultimately what I found is that these maps of thinking are mostly in our way. They're in our way to reaching in to what we truly have access to, that what's truly inside of us. We have this, and, and this is scientific, like literally at a cellular level, we have this knowledge. That it's the knowledge that runs our body, right? That keeps us alive. There's this, this pure truth that's on a cellular level. And it's about getting the maps out of the way so you can access that. Because what I found is that as people were trying to fix all these symptoms, and, and I even listened to a, a, is it today? Today or yesterday? Like I say, I'm always researching. <laughs> You'll rarely see me without an earbud or something going on where I'm researching something. <laughs> but um, the, the psychologist was talking about all these methods, these methodologies to help teenagers or to help your children as they're growing up with their anxieties and things. And they would just, and, and they would say, you just do this. And when they do this, you respond this way and you do this. There's all these skills that they're trying to teach. And that's the common thing. It's like, you got to get rid of this problem they have so that things will go better and that you'll feel better and everybody will feel better and they'll feel better and everything will be okay. And, and that is one, the big difficulty there is there's a ton of stuff to remember. I mean, I listened for an hour and a half. I was like, inundated, like what's the word, <laughs> inundated? <laughs> I was just overwhelmed with all of the like, okay, so then I got to do this when they say this, and then I got to respond like this, and then I got to act like that, and then I got to do this thing, and I got to do that. And that's, that's not, that's, it's really hard, and it's really overwhelming. And not that only- That doesn't mean you can't <clears throat> get to what you want or what you're looking for through that way but that maybe there's an, uh, another way that's just a lot more efficient and a lot faster. Yeah, because the common thing I found is that when uh, in, in, in any kind of therapy or something like that, someone would come in and they'll sit there and talk to them about a specific thing that they're struggling with, right? So they'll, they'll, they'll sit there and try to walk them through and, talk, and teach them some things about that and, and um, try to help them like <clears throat> overcome. And, and there's a, there's a kind of a core here that, that a lot of this is derived from, and it's, it's called NLP. And I don't know how many of you have heard of that, but it stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. And it's how we use our words to literally activate the chemicals in our brain. When it comes down to it, it's, it's, it's the electro, electro, our brain runs on electricity, so it's the electricity and the chemicals in our brain. We use words to do that, and words can be used to help people change in a way that will help them overcome these patterns. And so I would see someone come to someone that is, for example, they have an addiction to smoking, for example. And, and I'll clarify that any of the, most all of what we call mental illnesses are actually addictions. They're actually addictions in the brain. If you look at it on a neuroscience, neuroscientific level, it looks just like a, an addiction to anything else. It's a repetitive process that the brain gets a reward and it sees that way of doing it easier or better than any other way of doing it. So then it continues to do it. So, and, and I'm giving you a little more than I usually do here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but that pattern, that, that is, an, is an addiction and you can change, you, you know, in NLP, someone will come in and let's say they are, uh, they're addicted to maybe cigarettes. And so they'll walk them through a process of re- changing their perspective around that and they'll give them new reasons and new insights that will really help them change and then they'll stop and they'll stop sometimes just like that they'll walk out of there and not smoke anymore however what I noticed and what I wanted to get over and through as I help people is the tendency to when the environment changes or their experience their what's what they're around changes then suddenly there's new triggers and they come back and now they want to do that again. They want to act out with that thing again, right? 
And, and we can say this about anxiety too. Anxiety is the same way. A anxiety is so similar to an addiction to smoking, for example. It's surprisingly similar. So, so being able to interrupt the patterns and put new ones in there is the skill that we want to teach the individual to do themselves, as opposed to helping them just overcome that one thing, walk out of there, but not really be empowered to continue it on if something else comes up, right? That's the big key that I haven't seen other people capture. And, and I'm talking to parents because this is what's going on, is that the troubles that your children have, most of you, unless they're adopted at an older age, but even if they're adopted, it depends on how long you've been with them. There's a lot of things in there <laughs> to work with. But, <clears throat> but the patterns that they're typically stuck in, that repetitive pattern, it is, pro it is most likely deri a derivative of one of the parents or both of the parents' uh, patterns. And then it's amplified and turned into an addiction, right? So, you know, some people have addictive uh, uh, patterns or, or tendencies, more addictive tendencies than others. And so they'll take on a, maybe what's a small pattern from their parents that's maybe not a big problem for the parent at all. It's, maybe it is and the parent doesn't know it, <laughs> which is more common than not. <laughs> but, the, but they take that and they kind of, they have this ability to hyper-focus on it and really start to spin that into something that's really big. Now, this is the key. This is why we're, we're going with parents here because the parent, since it's the origin, it, 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 the parent has the original pattern. That, that if the parent can find the pattern within themselves, that's the one the child is, is repeating and, and amplifying. If the parent figures out how to change that inside themselves, it will almost 90 plus percent of the time, it will, it will help that child. And sometimes, almost instantly, I have, uh, I have an unlimited amount of s stories from parents who have used this. And instantaneously, that child shifts so much because the parents shifted. The parents shifted their own maps so much that the child just took to it immediately because it was all based off of the parent. We don't realize, even if our children are adults, even if they're older adults, that their maps are still ones that were based off of their childhood experiences that they, get, that they got, that they tapped into from their parents. And, and, and that's one of the reasons that we're really, in our, in our marketing, we're really targeting parents because they are ultimately in the number one spot, better than any therapist. Once they learn this core system to get to the core, they're in a better position than anyone else. By far, by far, not even a close anything. Because it's about changing maps. And most of a child's maps are based off of their parents' maps. Uh, it's almost all their parents' maps. Even if they were in uh, daycare, even if, even if they weren't there very much. You know, usually the mom is with the, with the children a lot more than the dad, but it's, it's still a lot of what the dad, it's, it's even the mom's perceptions and maps and views of the dad, of the father. And so it's this incredible system that when we learn to tap into and we make those shifts and changes ourselves, people fall along. As I was helping people before I was really working with parents, I was helping with people and they would come back and say, did you talk to my family? Because they're different. They change. Something's different. They keep, they treat me differently. Like they talk to me differently. <laughs> and, I, and I warn people ahead of time, this is going to happen. You're going to see it. Mm -hmm. and, and you're going to think that they did something, but it's really you. And you've shifted and you've affected their shifting. And I can, I can bring in a lot of parents I've worked with here that will tell you. And, and actually the last one we did here, we had four. I think four parents mm -hmm. that just got up and just told us how incredibly life-changing, absolutely life-changing it was for themselves and their parenting and how much it just freed them. And so it, it's, it's really, it's, the, the parents tend to have these patterns that they don't know about that are putting them in a place 
that makes it so they can't tap into their guidance system that can tell them specifically what to do with their child. Very specifically and very quick and easily. It is the most miraculous. I can't, I have so many stories about this. Mm -hmm. I can't even tell you how extensive. And she can tell you, she's been around. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so interesting to even see how um, the issue is relying, I mean, it's, it's yourself, right? We, a lot of the time we feel like maybe it's communication, that we're not being able to communicate well with one another, but it's really going internal into ourselves and then showing other people that they can change. And it's not a process of going back in your past and thinking about your traumas and re-hashing re, uh, <laughs> all of that, right? It's, it's a new process of moving forward, seeing that, okay, now I have this thing that I can go to every time this comes up or every time I have this struggle or whenever I get a trigger of anxiety or that feeling, it's something that you can turn to and go through that in your head. And it's, it's all you, right? you become your own coach. And that is the biggest difference with this. And, it, and it's so exciting. It's something that's really fun. It's not this hard thing that you are like, oh, I have to go and like work through this in my head. It's like, oh my goodness, I understand this right now. And so now I can work through it in my head and this is fun and this is exciting. And now I'm this new person and you're just excited about life. It's, it's not this hard thing that you have to push through and, and do and you, you don't enjoy it. It's, it's something that becomes a part of your life. And every single day we're walking through this process with each other <laughs> and together. And it's, it's this exciting process that we actually miss. Like if, if we don't do it in a week or have a, a bigger breakthrough, I guess, and we're like, oh, we missed that. <laughs> you know? It's this fun thing that you get to turn to every single day. And it's, and it's exciting. A lot of the times people, um, when they tell us their difficulties and things that they're struggling with, we actually get excited about that. And they're kind of like confused. They're like, I'm feeling like I'm suffering. I'm in pain. And you're sitting here all excited. And it's like, we're super excited because we can see how you can then change. And so that excites us. It's not like a therapist who, uh, a lot of times we hear of therapists who um, uh, get tired when they have met with their clients or are exhausted or <laughs> kind of go into their own uh, mental illness. Um, yeah, they only have like an 80% re uh retention of therapists after five years. When someone graduates and goes into the field themselves, they last on average about five years and then they, they, they wear out mm -hmm. because they're still, they're just, they're just working on all those symptoms, mm -hmm. symptoms, 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 one after the other, and it just doesn't have the full impact that they were hoping to have when they decided to take on that career and go to school and do all that. And that's what I've seen a lot of. There are some good ones though. There are some that went outside. Matter of fact, we went to a event a while back and there were two therapists up there and one of them I could tell because it's a new language by the way mm -hmm. you'll this is a new language you'll see the world differently you'll see people differently and when you watch other people you go oh they're doing this their brains doing this I can tell this this is going on <laughs> <laughs> because because it is so impactful and and these two therapists got up and one of them I could tell had no clue and the other one absolutely knew it and I went up and talked to him afterwards and I was like I was like, hey, you're going out, you're stepping out of the, <laughs> the, the, the box, the box here. And he's like, I know, because it wouldn't help anyone if I didn't. Like, I'm really researching on my own, trying to figure out how to help people. I'm not using the stuff I learned in school because it doesn't work very well. And I was like, wow, this is a good, there's a good one right there. There's, there's good ones. <laughs> there's some that are doing it and figuring it out. But I'll tell you, the other guy was, I, I would never send anyone to him. He was, he, he was struggling himself at such a level that he, he mostly talked about himself the whole time and his own struggle. And it was like, wow. <laughs> and, and so, and you'll know what, why they even do that and what happens typically when you do go and talk to other people about your problems and everything and how it doesn't really help your brain. So, and then another thing we get from people a lot is like, well, if you reprogram your brain, then, and, and, and you have something, you know, the, all these changes, what if you just forget? What if you can't remember something or you can't remember to do something or whatever like that? And uh, what we teach is how your brain works in such a way that you can see what that perfect storm is for making it so that doesn't happen. So for example, if you've ever been to a magic show, anybody been to a magic show? <laughs> Never been to a magic show? <laughs> you ever seen any magic tricks? Yeah. Okay, good enough. <laughs> if, if, the, if, if your brain goes through a certain series of experiences when you're watching the magic trick, then 
if they show you the magic trick, they show you how they did it, you'll never unsee what they show you, right? Mm -hmm. They cut someone in half and you're like, what? How? No way, you know? And then, and, and usually this happens when you're younger because you've seen them, you've seen a lot by the time you're older, but, and then they show you behind the scenes how it, how it works. You will never again see someone cut in half and think, oh, wow, holy cow, that's amazing. How are they doing? No. It doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter how distracted you are in life, it doesn't matter, because you, your brain went through a series of experiences that locked it in. And that's what we teach. We teach you to understand and know what that process is, so that you can make things happen. You can make changes happen you that will lock, lock them in. You can lock in over and over and over as much yeah. as you want. And you can keep lock, you know, because everything's complex, right? So you see someone cut someone in half, and you're all amazed and everything, then they show you how it's done, but the next time you do it, there's a slight difference to it, and you're like, oh wait, could it be that? I don't know. So then we teach you how to, you know, take another piece or another map that, that coincides or, or uh, affects. affects, yeah. So like the, the addiction example, someone, uh, they stop smoking because, you know, they realize all the, they have all these new understandings about their environment and all that it'll do and the reasoning and everything like that. And maybe one of the reasons is that they have a daughter and that daughter is going to be exposed to secondhand smoke or whatever those things are, but they, it just hadn't sunk in. So this, this method gets it to sink in, right? It sinks way in. And then they go through life and they're doing great and they, they haven't taken a cigarette for all this time. And then their daughter grows up and moves out. And the environment shifts and changes. And if they don't have the tool of how to find that, you know, that magic trick, how it was done, and know how their brain works, then they could fall back into that, that behavior. That pattern but if they know it's like oh then I just got to go through this process and they know the process and sometimes they don't think I got to go through the process the brain just does it like half the time it just does it and you're just like oh I just did it like <laughs> my brain just just saw the magic trick and now I can't unsee it and wow and it happens it's um, it's it's incredible and it is it is just really life changing it's really fun and very very fun <laughs> yeah it's fun so i we talk to a lot of people who come to us really in a lot of despair a lot of emotional despair a lot of deep struggle and well, our goal is to help them see there you go joe <laughs> yeah <laughs> that it can all shift and change and it can become fun it really can and it, it's kind of a crazy concept or idea that you can see something that is causing so much pain and you're going through so much suffering and that you can then change the way that you see that thing to actually empower you and to excite you, right? That is a very, very deep level. That's, a, that's going to the, your core and being able to change that. And so that's why it's so solidifying and, the, and neuroplasticity and I mean literally in your brain changing those connections and, and becoming excited about that thing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's incredible. It's yeah. amazing. And, and, and there's a process that gets it to where you can see it clearly. And I'm going to show you just real quick. Have you seen this? Do you remember this? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this before? Not this example. So I'm going to show the people that are here so they can all take a look at the picture. So this is a, this is a representation that is, uh, you know, visual representation. Your brain is a lot more complicated than just visual. And I'll show it to these guys up here. It's not going to focus on it, but you can kind of see. So within the boxes, that's okay. Those two boxes of that, those dresses are actually the same color. And now I've told you. Now, if I wouldn't have told you, what are your chances of ever figuring that out? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much none, right? So within the boxes, and I've even told you. This is the this is the whole thing of most therapy. Let me tell you. Let me tell you that this is the way it is. And let me tell you some strategies and let me tell you some things. It's not enough. It just doesn't do it. What you have to do is you have to take what's called the framework around a way. Because there's a framework around this that makes you think it's a certain way. So if you take the framework around, you put a, an empty frame around it, what you're really doing is you're tapping into your innate system that's built inside of you that gives you all truth. You're moving the map. Yeah, you're moving the maps out of the way. So if you move the maps out of the way, and I'll show you guys that the dress, that color, 
and that color. <laughs> I love watching people's faces. <laughs> so you see that color right there and this color right here. <laughs> I'll show you guys in a minute. <laughs> so you got those two colors. See that one? And that one. Isn't that amazing? So that one and that one. They're literally the same color. But as soon as I take it away, even though I've shown you and I've put this there, and I take it away, it's still, not the same color. still hard to see. And even when I printed it out off this computer, I was like, wait a minute, they're not the same. <laughs> I got to do this to figure out if they're the same. I cut it in half and put, moved it over. I was like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys here on the camera if I can do it without. He's like, am I printing this off right? So within these Which boxes, they're the same color. So I'm going to show you. Let's see if I can do this on the camera. That, that color right there. See that is the same as that color. And the color right above it, right there, is the same as, where'd it go? Right there. So they're actually the same color. But it's hard to see without someone clearing up what's around it so you can get rid of the uh, maps that you gathered in your childhood because what we're doing is we're tri our life experiences are triggering childhood maps and then those childhood maps come up and they start to take place in your thought process and they're no they're not very they're not accurate they're not very accurate at all as a child you were clueless of what was what you're really thinking and doing you're being very reactive it's kind of like the animal side of our brain was mostly you know taking Responding. over mostly responding to everything. And so, so, uh, so we're really excited to help you guys to go deeper. And, and uh, you know, th we've, we've gone over a few points and we, we want to help you see how much your parenting can shift in a very short amount of time, very, very short amount of time by, by going through the process that we use. And, and I, I didn't mention before, but after I started figuring this out, I was talking to a doctor who does neuro, uh, uh, a neurology clinic, right? A doctor who measured people's brains. You guys, some of you guys know about it. <laughs> and uh, he said, this is, uh, this is incredible. He goes, y you should open, like it just resonated with him really well. And he said, come open an office here and start working with my, my patients. And I said, great, let's do it. And I, so I started working with these patients that were coming in with mental illness. And uh, the results were phenomenal. It was all referral. And for a couple of years, I got to just really hone in this, uh, this, this model to really bring it to the place where I could share it with more. Because sharing it with one person at a time, I, I started to feel antsy about that. Like, I got to get it to more people at a time. I've got to be able to reach this world, it needs it so much. I see suffering everywhere. Once you learn this language, everywhere you go, you're gonna see it. The people in the grocery store, the people at church, the people, your own, your family, your own uh, uh, siblings and, and extended family, everybody that you know, the, your coworkers, everybody, you're gonna just start seeing it in them. And it's incredible. You're like, I know how to change that. Like, I, I know what's going on in your head and I know why you're miserable and I know how to change it. And not, so you're not miserable. And not only not miserable, but very capable to achieve and accomplish what you really want to achieve and accomplish. First see it and then do it. But we're just spinning around in these childhood maps and they're just not very helpful. <laughs> they're not getting us there. And we'll, we'll learn more about that and when we go deeper. So, uh, what, do you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we should do questions and answers. Okay, yeah. yeah. Let's do, actually, um, I was going to have uh, Stephanie. Stephanie has been through, so we do these group sessions and that's, that's what we're encouraging everyone to participate in is to consider coming to our group sessions. I, I used to do just one-on-one -on -one sessions with people and now we do groups so we can get more people involved. And the more people you bring, the less it costs per person. We try to make it, it's much less expensive. It's less than half than what it is to come one-on-one. -on -one. And it's, it's less expensive the more people you bring. So the bigger group we can get, the better it is for everybody. So, um, but Stephanie has been through it. She's been through that program. And then we have a follow-up program that goes with that that she's also been through, the, a 30-day program. And uh, just wanted to give her an opportunity to share 
like what she feels like it did for her and what she feels like it still can do for her as she goes forward. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, and it's the maps that you set up and ways that you respond. Right. And, and so, one of them says, don't ever say no to him because it triggers him. So if he says he wants to do something, say, hey, that sounds like a good idea. Maybe I don't want to do it right now. I'll say, hey, how can we do that in an hour or let's do that tomorrow or something? I'm not saying no, which triggers him. <laughs> so you kind of have to know the little, little things, different ways of being positive. <laughs> and and I'll tell you, Stephanie, she, she's got a challenge and a half because she's taken on other people's children. <laughs> and yes. the cool thing is that as you as you move, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> as you move these maps out of the way, and you 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 discover that that all all encompassing truth, you can help anyone. You really can. It, it's it's actually helping your own family is is personal because you're going into yourself and you're figuring yourself out and when you figure yourself out the other people almost almost always follow suit they just change with you because 
you, you figured it out and you start acting different. And they've been acting, they don't know, but they've been acting and mirroring you to an extent they're totally unaware of. So, so, but then taking on other kids, it's, you still can move everything out of your way and still find that truth that still touches them, which she has figured out at a high level. And she's very humble at the level at which she expresses herself. She's helped so many kids and this is, it's so I, awesome. I think our biggest thing is when you label a child, most labels that kids get, kids I get are bad labels. And so changing those labels to help them see that they're not that label that yeah. they're called, you know, and that's, it's still tough and you get a lot of, I mean, I've had knives pulled on me. I've had a foot size bruise on my leg. I've been called every word in the book. You know, <laughs> but I've had uh, like this kid, uh, three of my husband's siblings, well, two of my husband, husband's siblings do foster care with the same agency. And this is what my, his sister has a kid in her home that she just got. And she got removed because she hit a phone. I'm going, <laughs> you removed a child because she hit a phone? What? Like, <laughs> it makes sense. Why did you, child because she hit a phone you know <laughs> yeah so and and that's that's one of the things we talk deeply about is is our our identity the stories around our identity and how those stories the way that those stories play out can be changed and you can change them and you can change yours and you can change someone else's and it's easier than you think to change someone else's you just tap into their their maps and their reasoning and if you get enough of their existing maps to wrap around the new map and then you provide it in a way that that locks in with those, then it's like that magic trip. And then suddenly their identity shifts and you've just changed them for life. And as parents, we are in the, the ultimate situation to do that. Even if our, we think our children are unreachable, even if they're angry, mad, screaming, anxious, yelling, hating, any of those things, you can still do it. It's incredible how effective it is to still do it. And, it, and it's, not, it's not the typical being positive and just saying you're a great kid and, and that. It's, there's a bit more to it, but it's, it's miraculously effective. So, so uh, our program, if, if we've, we're, we're at 7.30? Oh, 7.40. 7.40. So um, we currently, we have split up our we used to do a full day session and now we've split it up. So we use, so we have two different days. So we do the first half one day and the second half the next day. Um, and this upcoming one will be actually next Friday and Saturday. So this, this coming Friday and Saturday is our next one. And it, uh, it will be here. Uh, maybe not this room, but in this building. Um, I have a good friend that that's one of the doctors here and uh, he's, He's come to our event and he was like, wow, this is phenomenal. And he is sending his patients my way and telling them it's not therapy. So if you've done therapy, don't worry, this isn't it. It's just totally different. <laughs> and if the therapy hasn't worked, don't worry, this is something different. And so, um, so we will uh, we'll be doing that. And it's, I think, 5.30 on Friday and then 4 on Saturday is when they start. And they go on into the evening till about 9.00. And so, um, so we, we'd love to have everybody, anybody who's interested and, and kind of want to open it up to questions. If anybody has any questions uh, about what we've kind of presented. So that's the 11th and 12th. Next 11th week. and 12th, yeah. Anybody have any questions about it all? So the way that it works is that it's, it's, it's two full, or two, those two days, and for the first person, it's $400. And then for each additional family member, it's only 200. Our goal is to get as much of the family in here as we can because it's a language. It's a language that you learn. Now, if you don't have family or other, you know, we'll, we'll do it for a friend or anybody you wanna bring that you can tell, tell them about and bring. We, we will um, we'll actually, we would like to do anything to help you to encourage people to come and so, we have some different videos and different things that you can share that, that will help people understand what it is we're doing. You can see it's kind of a complex thing to explain. It's not a simple, like, oh yeah, it's just, you know, I can't say it in one sentence. You know, it's, it takes a little bit. So it, it's, uh, 
it's a little bit to get someone to understand that this is, you know, this is what it is. But it's, it's pretty amazing. We have a, a testimonial video that we've put together with a handful of different um, clients that we've worked with, people who've attended. Uh, we, we have a lot of, we could get a lot more if we took the time to reach out to people because I know that there's a hand, quite a few people out there that are kind of following what we do and have been to our events and just really had life-changing experiences and are happy to share them. Everyone's happy to share them because it's just so, such a big shift in their lives. And, and of course, everyone's different and at different levels and they, f they feel and experience things differently. And our goal is to just try as hard as we can to give everybody the biggest opportunity to have, you know, the most benefit from it. And so, so that's kind of how this upcoming event is. Also, we're not doing this just for the money. We really want to help anyone. So if anyone is in a financial situation where that is just a lot for them, and I mean, really, if you, if you were to go to a group therapy session or something like that, I mean, they're usually charging between 150 and 200 per hour per one session. So th this is a lot less expensive than any of those when really it could be a lot more expensive. We'd still have a lot of people there, but our goal is to get it to everybody. But if, if you know people or even you yourself are struggling financially and that's just too much or whatever, just talk to us because we don't want to leave anyone out that, that wants to participate in this. So, so just, you know, talk to us and let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll work with whatever we can to help you be able to be there. So, so does anybody have any, any questions about what we've talked about or? Do you recommend we stay with our current so-called counseling? Um, I, Should we talk about that on the side? That, I would say that that's an individual thing because there are good counselors out there. Um, there are good ones. And, and if, you, if you come to the group session, you'll learn enough about your own brain and how it works to figure out if your therapist is helping you, if it's truly helping, or if it's not. You'll, you'll literally know. You, you'll, I won't even have to coach you on what questions to ask. Your brain, by, by the time you're done, you won't be able to unsee the magic trick, right? But, but I'll tell you what is, is very common. Uh, it's common with people who talk to their friends about their problems. It's, t it's common with people who go to their therapist with problems. And that is, is that they go, and, and we'll go into this a lot deeper, but they'll go in and they'll meet needs through that therapist as a replacement, kind of for what they're doing in life, and kind of gain a need from the therapist. And, and I've always watched to assure, to try to assure that people don't do that with me. I put it back on them. I always keep giving it back to them to help them see that it's not me because this is an empowering program that helps you get to the place where you don't need other people to be or, or to try to fulfill your needs for you because that's what we're typically doing. We, we, it's, it's a way to really discover what unconditional love is actually, because what we're typically doing is we're making trades in our relationships. We're trading. We're not trading means there's a condition. So we tend to be stuck in that pattern and it's the same. And we often get in that same kind of thing in a kind of a different way, but with a therapist where it, it could, it doesn't mean it is, but you'll be able to tell yourself. And, and after that, that group session, that would be a really good time to have a, an additional conversation about it to see with that new language to, to, cause you'll just start seeing it. It's just amazing. You can't unsee. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. You walk around and you just see things happening and you just know what's going on. You, you see all these kind of magic tricks going on all over the place that no one seems to be able to figure out. And there's all this misery and pain and suffering that's completely unnecessary. And, and, and it's just so freeing to just know how that's happening. So we're, we've got our daughter in uh, the greenhouse therapy uh, out of Saratoga, which is new, and they actually do neural therapy. Mm -hmm. We've been pleading and begging with them to hook her up to the machine <laughs> as quick as they can because we've never heard of it before, and it's, it's new. Mm -hmm. but, um, so with more extreme cases, something that's kind of a bump, a helper, um, is the office that I used to be at that I used to have a, uh, a office in and that's Dr. Oliver and it's called the Neuroclinic and it's in Lehigh 
And that guy is a genius. He's one of those, like, he researched, we share research with each other all the time because we're finding things that we know the other person is fascinated with. And he tests the brain and the neurology of the brain to see where it's functioning well. Um, it's, it's a lot about neuroplasticity. So what we're, the process we're going through is changing how the brain's connected and how it's used. And he, find, he will go in and figure out, because there, there have been some clients that really needed to get to a place where they could even process things. Like they just weren't processing because of the habits that their brain was in. We get these childhood patterns kick in and we start using them so much that that's all we, like our brain, that's all it knows how to do in certain situations. And then the other part of the brain kind of lets go of other possibilities or other options or other reasoning that they could have, but they don't because their brain has spent so much time in that one area. And we're gonna talk about the different areas of the brain. We're gonna talk about the chemicals of the brain. We're gonna talk about the electricity of the brain, like all the things that make it up so that you know how the magic trick works. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, it'll answer so many questions. It, it is constantly answering questions for me, all the time, every day. Like I talked with my daughter, we, we walk each other through processes almost every day where we help each other. And sometimes it's just a conversation and it's just one little sentence that we say to the other person and the other person goes, oh. it's like you gotta apply it. It's like you have all these maps and you learn this thing and certain things come to your mind and you apply it to those things and you change. But then there's so many of them. They're endless. They're going to come, come at you your whole life. There's going to be more and more and more. And when you learn to love the process of doing that, man, life gets good. <laughs> it gets really good because it's just, you're just like, bring another problem. It's not a problem. It's just a symptom. And I have that, you know, we talk about, I've, talked a lot and done some presentations to people talking about trauma. And one of the things I tell them is that the trauma is a symptom. The, the, the results that we call trauma, like this person is traumatized because they did da, 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 you know, this happened to them, this happened to them, and now they this, this, this. Those are all just symptoms. The trauma was already, the trauma resided already in them. And the event brought it out. So it's about fixing what's already there. You already have a bunch of problems in your head these core problems that are deep inside you. And life comes at you and brings it out so that you can do something about it. But the problem is, we live this life now that teaches us how to escape and avoid all that. And so we, we, I'm 50 years old and I've gone through this whole life, most of my life just avoiding. Like we're master avoiders. We live in an era right now where avoidance is at every corner. It's at max, it's in my, it's actually in my pocket. It's not even around the corner. I can use this anytime to get all of the chemical needs that my brain naturally has to some extent, at least to a small extent, enough that I'm satisfied and now I'll avoid or I'll escape instead of actually work through and change. And therefore just creating another version of more trauma, more potential trauma in the future. And so you can find everything. You can find like you can go into yourself and you can discover where these maps are by asking simple questions and just finding out where you can apply this new information. And we go through a process. We have a, uh, you'll, if, if, you, if you can make it this week and you sign up, we'll get you some uh, worksheets. There's worksheets that you work through that get your brain kind of going and sets it up to have the changes and the shifts on, that, on those two days. So it's pretty fun. It's a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of neat stuff. So thank you for your questions. Anybody else have any other questions or any others, Joe? Anybody have? I have quite a few clients who had spent years in therapy, people on medications that are n no longer needing any of those things. It's, it's pretty common. Sometimes it takes longer than others. Everybody's story is different and there's different complexities to everything. So I'm not promising anything or saying, you know what, this is going to happen like this. No, everybody's really complex and different. That's one thing we learn. But at the core, we're all, we all have the same truth in us. We all have the same core and the same way to get there. So that's what we'll do. So hopefully everybody can make it. I'd be really excited if we all, <laughs> and I'm going to see if I can get to a hold of the, oh, we got at least four or five people that didn't make it on here. So figure out what happened <laughs> and get a get maybe get a recording to them or something so they can watch it. So cool. 
Any other questions from anybody? All right. Any concerns about this weekend, this next weekend? It's worth missing it. Just about anything that could be going on in your life, I'll tell you. <laughs> I can't think of any event in my life that if I would have known what this could do for me, that I, would have, that I wouldn't have missed. I'd have missed Christmas morning for it. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully we can all make it happen if possible. So, all right, cool. Well, thanks everybody. This has been fun.